Too many young men fill too many of the graveyards of this country for there to have been any doubt left. Albania's halting progress away from Stalinism towards democracy has been dangerously interrupted by the rule of the gun. Albanians have seen the complete breakdown of the police and justice system. In this small country of three million people, it's estimated that since March, more than 3,000 people have been shot dead. In the absence of official justice, many ordinary people have resurrected an ancient Albanian text which lays out rules of behavior governing crime and punishment. It is called the Book of Lek, and what it says, in effect, is an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. It's a creed of vengeance that lies behind thousands of blood feuds now happening in Albania. To start a blood feud is easy, but to stop one, almost impossible. Skander Lilai is on a quest to find his missing brother. These days have been the most terrible days of my life, as we couldn't find my brother. We don't know who to address to look for him, because there's no police, no institutions to help us. We're trying to find him, but we're depending on the support of our friends. Skander's brother Petrit, an attorney, was kidnapped from a coffee shop here in Vlora, the town at the epicenter of Albania's recent collapse. For all intents and purposes, Vlora is an armed mafia fiefdom. For the children of this city, the mafia are their heroes. From his family home in Vlora, Skander has spent the summer investigating the kidnapping of his brother. He and his family have been virtually alone in their work. No one but their closest friends will help them. What happened here in Vlora, with this situation that was caused by bad politics? We actually reached a state where people started behaving worse than animals. What rule of law there is consists of heavily armed and often heavily disguised special forces police officers. In the current turmoil, they're incapable of investigating crime. Instead, the best they can hope for is to attempt to limit future crime by stopping the flow of weapons around the country. There is little decorum at the vehicle checkpoints. Too often these have been the scenes of brutal firefights. And as a method of stopping the movement of weapons, it works. In this case, the gun is legal, one of thousands licensed in response to the growth of illegal weapons. The task force have been successful, at least in part, in restraining the armed gangs of Albania. This flatbed truck they confiscated came battle ready an ominous clue to the belligerent intentions of its former owners. The staff at Vlora Central Hospital are too well aware of the effects that this gun culture is having upon the local community. They have become experts in dealing with every manner of gunshot wounds. Bardosh Pega is a typical victim of this out-of-control gun culture. He was in his yard with his next door neighbor when, playfully he says, he slapped him. He ran to his home and got an automatic submachine gun. He then came up to me and shot me. In the next bed, Edmund was shot by accident. In Albania, nowhere is safe from the influence of the gun. This hospital has been the scene of a number of shootings. In one case, a person who'd shot and killed two members of another gang was wounded. 
and he himself was hospitalized here. The next day, the other gang came into the hospital and executed the wounded man right here in the ward. Try to understand what terror the staff in the hospital have to live with when people from outside come and kill their patients right in front of their eyes. Try to imagine how difficult it is for medical staff to give qualified service when they're surrounded by people with Kalashnikovs and grenades. It's against this backdrop that Skandalilai went in search of his brother Petrit. On his journey to all these places where the body of his brother might have been hidden, he was to discover several other victims of shooting. According to the information we received, I was told to search inside and outside the tunnels. We went there and found the body, but it was not my brother. It was a young man, 18 to 23, who'd been shot through the temple. I saw that it wasn't my brother. Even at the bridge of Mefoli, I found another corpse. He was a young kid with a thin moustache. Skander found another corpse at the lake of Kanina, but it was not his brother. There was a gun wound at his left ear, a single bullet wound. He had big army boots, black hair, black trousers. He was in this position. That was the way we found him dead. My brother's mother, his father, his wife, his children, his sister, his brother, that's me. We were all waiting for him to come home. We kept hearing rumors, look here, look there, because we were told he could be at the lake of Kanina, he could be at the lake of Babitsa, by the castle or the Kosovica tunnels, but we find him nowhere. <laughs> Skander was to discover the whereabouts of his brother in a small village near the town of Fear. When we went to film at the morgue, we didn't recognize his brother, Petrit Lilai, as the body was so badly mutilated, it had been wrapped up in a bundle on the table. I, as a brother, must try to find out who's the author of this crime. Then I must see that justice is done. I have the obligation to make those guilty face the law. But if the justice system can't fulfill this, then there's self-justice, because I won't let the blood of my brother go unavenged. But I will only do this if the law won't fulfill this obligation. But this would be worse, because then I would have to pass on a vendetta to my son. But the victim's father, Lilo Lilai, is determined that there will be no revenge for his son's death until all efforts have been made by the authorities to track down his killers. The police, however, are under siege. Armed guards protect the police station from their would-be clientele. As the only functioning authority in Vlora, they are in effect the bank, the post office, and if they have time, the police force as well. Cases of kidnap and murder must unfortunately wait at the back of a very long queue. Lilo tries to befriend one of the armed guards to let him into the police station. I'm trying to meet the investigator in charge so that we can help each other with the common goal that we have. And that goal is to be more precise with details. We're tired of being victims of the dictatorial system. I came here today to try to meet the person who's in charge of the investigation into my son's death. But the police tell me that at this moment they're busy. I have to come back later, they say. They have a meeting. This is the order that's been given to me.
A week after Petrit's funeral, his family, as is tradition, gather to mourn at his grave. There is no doubting their grief nor their frustrations at the impotency of the authorities to deal with his killers. Today in Albania there are thousands of families who share these emotions. Without a concerted effort to rid this country of the scourge of the rule of the gun, people like these will revert to the ancient ways. Even though the blood feuds that result may reverberate through the generations to come.